Hello Capricorn and welcome to my channel Tarot by Gabrielle. This is going to be a general reading for Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus signs looking at your connection to the person that you are dealing with and needing to learn the most from right now. We are looking at all three sides of the connection so we've got your energy toward it, their energy toward it and the energy in between it. The concept being that there are three sides to every story. So we're looking at your version of the truth, their version of the truth and this higher level unbiased truth in the middle. This middle section is looking at what is the deeper purpose of this connection and what is the best way for you to move forward in order to align further with your higher self. As I do in all of my readings, I've pulled the overall energy and clarified those messages, as well as the overall theme for the reading, which we'll jump into in just a second, but I still have a different tarot deck I'll be pulling from for each side of this connection, as well as the advice deck I will be using to close out the reading in the extended. Any information on the extended reading or on booking a personal reading with me is in the description box below. Last thing, please remember that these are general readings. They are not here to resonate fully for everyone, and they won't resonate fully for everyone. So please remember to take what does resonate and help your personal situation and leave what does not. On that note, the whole reading can be reversed. If that's the case for you, that's totally fine and totally normal. Again, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you've been on my channel for a while, I bet you could say that verbatim or you just scroll right past it. <laughs> um, all right, Capricorn, let's jump on and let's start by looking at your side of this connection. You have karmic with the four of cups here. So there's something about this connection that the universe is trying to draw your attention to, something that needs to be seen. Um, but I don't know if you're not seeing it because you don't want to see it. I don't know if you're not seeing it because it's too painful, because it's too hard. Um, I don't really know, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know what that is yet. Because I'm going to jump to the overall theme, there's shift here. So something in this connection kind of shifted. Now, maybe it wasn't super outright, but it's like you, you felt it. Like, like intuitively, you felt some sort of a shift. You felt things start to change here. But it's, I don't know, it feels like, yeah, like there's something off or has been off. I don't, I don't know. Now this person, they have, there are other priorities with the Knight of Wands in reverse. So with this energy right here, I mean, this can be an energy of like lacking vulnerability, not willing to be, to be open, to be honest. Um, kind of can be this energy of self-sabotage too. So maybe, I don't know if this person is pushing you away. With there are other priorities, it's almost as if they've, yeah, no, it's like they've been pushing you away to prioritize other things in their life. Now, in any healthy relationship, both people are going to have their individual lives, right? You can't be the center of the other person's world every single minute of every single day. That's just not going to be healthy or sustainable. But when, you know, I, I it's it's like this person has created distance in this connection or did, and it's, it's like you are having a hard time fully understanding why or where that's coming from. Interesting. And then the truth between this connection is second option with the Ten of Wands in reverse. So I'm not saying, I feel like you're starting to feel like an option in this person's life. Like you went maybe from being a priority from someone that they wanted to constantly, you know, spend time with or communicate with to, to just kind of feeling like you're more of an option than you are a priority. But I don't feel like it's always been like that. And I feel like that's why you're having a hard time seeing it for what it is, is because you're kind of holding on to how things were in the beginning of the connection, which is super normal and natural. But I don't know. I feel like there's a lot more going on than just like, oh, this person pulled away. I don't know what it is though. So let's just see. I, I don't know. Let's just dive in here. All right. This is for Capricorn side of the connection to the person they are dealing with. Capricorn side of this connection. Ooh, okay. Ten of Cups, Queen of Swords. So you could be dealing with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but you definitely don't have to because I could also see this as your energy too. Because with this Ten of Cups here, oh, Goodness, okay. And then you have the Ten of Pentacles. I mean, like, you definitely see or saw this person as your forever person. 
Like you saw them as kind of the path to fulfillment here for you. And I feel like, I feel like things are, were very good for a while or at least very much in the beginning. But this Queen of Swords energy, I mean, it's an energy of being, you know, having an open heart, having an open mind being very open. So, well, actually, before I get too far into that, I actually want to clarify this Queen of Swords. Clarifying this Queen of Swords. Okay, the Hermit with a Nine of Swords. So, uh, and that's kind of the vibe I was getting. It feels like this person causes you to get really in your head, causes you to overthink. Maybe even brings out some fear, some insecurity for you. Um, but there's a reason for that. Okay, so Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, I mean, my goodness. And then there's this Queen of Swords here. So it, it, and this feels all very much like it was Maybe when you first met this person or in the beginning or, yeah, but things have shifted. Let me get more. All right, Capricorn setting the connection. Swords in reverse with the high priestess in reverse. So, ooh, okay. So things have drastically shifted in this connection, and now you feel, I don't feel like you're super happy with how things are or were. This could be, again, this could be a past connection. I don't know necessarily. Obviously, take it as it resonates, but um, there's a part of you, okay. I feel like there's a decision that you're needing to make here, Capricorn, but you're not wanting to be honest about the fact that you need to make it. I don't know what that's in regard to. I don't know if that's like necessarily, oh, you need, you need to make a decision to walk away from this person. It doesn't need to be that drastic. But I feel like there's a decision that you're needing to make here that you're not wanting to. But where is this all coming? Like, I want to know what happened between this and this, right? And maybe you're like, yeah, me too. <laughs> Because things are really good and then now you're like, I don't know what to do. Or you do know what to do, but you don't want to do it um, for some reason. I'm sure you have your reasons. I'm not saying you don't. Why is the story coming out like that? It's like there's this whole middle part that's just not... Because something happened. Something caused this to shift. And maybe that's the case. Maybe you're unaware of it. Maybe you don't understand why things shifted and maybe that's what we'll get more of when we jump in over here. Universe page of cups. Ooh, okay. Okay, so there is no doubt that you have a tremendous amount of love for this person. Like, I feel like you you care about them so much. And you've been very open and willing, like with the page of cups here, and, and this kind of coupled with that Queen of Swords. It's like there's a you have so much openness towards this person. You're willing to do what it takes to make it work. You're willing to be honest, to be vulnerable, to communicate. But it's starting to feel. Well, hang on. Because the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. It's like this connection and everything you thought it could be is feeling very out of reach. Almost like it's not as possible as you once saw that it was. 
what the hell happened here? Okay. <laughs> because the two of wands in reverse, yeah, it's like you're, you're very in your head, you're overthinking. Um, but this isn't how it's always been, and that's why I'm so confused. I feel like you're very confused too. Okay, so hopefully we can get some clarity here. Because I am curious at what is going on. So let's see. Sorry, I just saw their two of wands on the bottom here. And you had that two of wands in reverse. Okay. I'm not going to read into that too much. Okay, let's see. This person's energy toward... Oh, okay. Capricorn. What Capricorn needs to know about this person's energy for them. <laughs> They're scared as hell. <laughs> the moon with the page of cups in reverse and there's the queen of swords in reverse. Okay, so that makes sense why they show, because remember, oh my gosh, I said you have this page of cups coupled with the Queen of Swords, right? You being very open. The first two cards that come out are both of those cards in reverse. So there's this energy of them being very closed off. Um, emotionally, like, it's like they're, they're really did, like they're, they closed themselves off, they kind of pushed you away here. Um, that's crazy how that message came out. Because yeah, you have this openness, this willingness to connect, this willingness to receive and give love, you know, openly. And it's like this person, especially with this moon here, there's, there's this fear that is in place that is keeping them from fully being able to be open, to be vulnerable. It's like, because I feel like they feel this Ten of Cups too, this potential, everything that this could be. And instead of that being like a, oh, this is so exciting, I want to make this work, this person's going, oh my God, that's so much for me to mess up and to lose and to, so many ways for me to get hurt and I don't want to deal with any of that, so pushing it away. Um, but yeah, that's it, funny. It's like I was like, oh, you're so open with the Queen of Swords coupled with the Page of Cups and then theirs is like straight up in reverse. Like they're so not. But something, something happened to kind of spook them here. Okay, so what else is going on with this person? This person's energy toward Capricorn. Okay, so I need to read into this because there's that two of wands. first thing that comes to mind is like wanting different things wanting a different different things than the other person but here's what's confusing is I don't feel like that's always been the case something this person changed their mind about something or like or another thing could be like you changed like you grew you evolved and that made you, you know, what you wanted or what you desired or what you're looking for kind of change. Or this person was open to like something long term and secure and, you know, commitment and all of that. But then when things started to get serious, they were like, oh, I don't actually want that. Not because they don't want it, but because they don't know how to handle it. So something changed. This person changed their mind, but not in the way that you think. It wasn't like they changed their mind about you. It wasn't like this energy of like, oh, this isn't good enough for me or this isn't actually what I want. It's not that. But I want to know, because yeah, this self -sab I mean, this self-sabotage at its finest, right? It's almost like, well, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I want to clarify this two of wands. I want to know. What is this two of wands talking about?
three of wands in reverse with the two of cups in reverse. Playing it safe by keeping their distance, but... It's almost like... This person is looking for reasons to push you away even though there aren't any. So they're kind of like coming up with freaking whatever. And it's all from this place of the moon. It's all from this place of fear. Now they might not be fully aware that they're doing this. You know, they might not have the emotional or just self-awareness to be able to understand, you know, oh, I'm pushing this person away because I don't feel lovable or I don't feel good enough or I'm too afraid to open up and be vulnerable and put myself out there like that. Like they might not have that thought process. Um, in fact, most of the time when people are kind of dealing with that, they don't, which is why therapy is so necessary or like just coming to understand self and uncover trauma and past stuff so that they don't let that control them in relationships. And that goes for everyone. Um, but yeah, it's like, things were good, things were fine. And then it's almost like they became too good and this person was like, oh, I'm scared, I don't know what to do. So I'm just gonna push Capricorn away because that's what's easier. It's like they started prioritizing things that, I don't know if it's like they weren't like good for them or what, this person's energy toward Capricorn. I mean, there it is. There's the self-sabotage. Queen of Cups, Pisces, Cancer, or um, what the heck? Why did I just completely blink on the third water sign? Scorpio. Sorry, Scorpios, if you're watching this. I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so... This, there, yeah, okay. Six of Cups in reverse, Knight of Wands in reverse. The self sabotage that's, that's happening for them in this connection, this is like a cycle for them. This isn't the first time they've kind of um, sabotaged something that's good for them. I feel like it's really typical for this person to push away love or good things, even. You know, sometimes it's like the classic example, and I mentioned this in readings before, but when we're afraid of failure, we won't even try. You know, it's, we all have a tendency to do it. That's why facing kind of your fear is necessary to overcome it so that it doesn't control you. This person, it's like they're so afraid of getting hurt or they're so afraid of being let down or they're so afraid of things ending poorly that instead of giving it a shot, it's safer and easier for them to just create that distance. Now, if they're not consciously aware of what's going on and the fact that this is kind of something that they do, it's going to just come out as, um, just like reckless behavior in a way because it's gonna it's just them looking for reasons to mess this up um, but this isn't the first time like this is, and that's where we have to understand when people push us away and we feel like there's rejection or we feel like they're not opening up in the ways that we wish that they would so that we could you know have the relationship that we know that we could have with them we have to learn not to take those decisions of the other person like personally, which is not an easy thing to do. But the more that we can understand that people are going to do what people are going to do, and most of the time it really doesn't have all that much to do with us, um, the more that we can make the best decision for us instead of trying to force someone to change or see the error in their ways or um, you know shame them or guilt them into seeing how they hurt us or whatever the case is because all that is is us trying to you know control somebody else and unfortunately you know people are going to be who they're going to be they're going to make their decisions they're going to self-sabotage if that's what they do they're going to you know hurt people hurt people all of that is going to happen until that person decides that they need to change and they're not going to decide that because of somebody else they're going to decide that when they recognize that they need to change and that's going to come with the willingness to face kind of um, that fear and the past associated with that, which is what a, most people spend a like lifetimes running from. Facing trauma, facing, you know, shadow sides, all of those things are not fun. <laughs> Worth it and like there's a benefit to them, absolutely, but not a good time and it's hard. And so if you're dealing with someone who's pushing you away, just know that I really 
don't feel as if it has much to do with you at all. Now, the biggest thing that you need to understand is that your ability to receive the love that you truly deserve and desire is not dependent on this person's um, decision to heal or to grow or to change or evolve or open up or whatever. If somebody else is unwilling or incapable of loving you in the way that you deserve, that is quite literally a sign from the universe that that person is not supposed to be in your life. Um, you know, healthy relationships of all forms. I'm not just talking about romantic, but, you know, friendships, just platonic relationships in general are going to be about two people who are open and willing to grow together. And if someone isn't willing to kind of face those things and, and be open to that growth, then there is nothing that you can do other than what is best for you. So I don't know, someone out there, I feel like needed to hear that, but all right, Capricorn side of this connection. So let's get more. Now that we understand what's going on here a little bit, let's, because the shift probably came out of nowhere for you because something, I mean, essentially, I feel like you got too close. You got too close and this person didn't know how to handle it. And so pushing you away was the absolute, um, to, in their mind, best thing for them to do. All right, Capricorn side of this connection. See, but this is what this is what I was afraid of seeing. So Knight of Swords in reverse with the Death in reverse and the Lovers in reverse. All right, all right, let's talk about this. And then there's the Queen of Cups again. Um, okay. I feel because this person is is acting the way that they are, behaving the way that they are, responding the way they are. You're starting to wonder you know, whether or not you're good enough for them. You know, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not good enough? Why don't they see my value? Why don't they see how good, um, you know, or how, like, much of a benefit my energy is to them? You know, whatever the case is. Um, and it's, it's that's, that's the starting to take somebody's decisions personally. Uh, you know, you obviously don't want this connection to end. You don't want things to fully come to an end. You don't want things to fully close out. You love, you love them. You care about them. You see so much potential and so much good and, and things at one point I feel like were very good and then until this person kind of got spooked. And now there's a part of you that is trying to chase this connection, um, giving way more to it than you are receiving. And, you know, I think that that's really natural whenever we feel someone start to pull away. We try to do everything in our power to pull them closer to us. But if you can honestly say you are showing up in the best way that you know how, and this person isn't seeing that and isn't responding in a positive way to that, that is not an indication that you need to try harder or that you need to be more than you are or that you need to, um, I don't know, you know, sacrifice your needs or your value. It's an indication that you are not being valued. And if you are not being valued, you have to learn to respond to that, not by trying to prove your value or trying to show that you're valuable, but by saying, I know what I bring to the table and I know that I'm valuable. And if you are not you know, in a place where you are able to receive and reciprocate that, then I have got to take that elsewhere. I've got to create distance in this connection because it's draining me, it's hurting me. And I feel like that's this decision that you're not wanting to make or you're not wanting to see that you need to make. Um, which is, is understandable. You know, it, it's completely understandable. But try not to get yourself so stuck on how someone else could do better, how someone else could treat you better, and try to make sure that you are also focusing on how you could treat you better. Because that's, that's the most important um, aspect to any kind of, healthy connection is two people showing up treating themselves with love and respect and that's being reflected by the other person Capricorn side of the connection four of wands with the three of swords there's a part of you that's like oh if we could just make it to the finish line yeah, I'm hurting. Yeah, this sucks. But look at what is on the other side of this finish line. If, if I just put in all this work and all this effort and, and I just wait and wait and wait and wait and keep getting my heart broken and keep getting disappointed and keep getting let down by this person, eventually they'll change, they'll grow, they'll see, and then eventually we can get here. 
That's what I'm feeling is kind of the vibe here. You're like, yeah, I will, I'll, I'm okay with hurting because look at how good things could be. If we could just make it to the finish line, if we could just get through this. But the thing is, getting through this has been the majority of the connection so far. One of the best things my therapist ever told me was the 80-20 rule in relationships. And that is with 80% of the time, things are good and 20% of the time, things are not so good because no relationship is perfect. And it's like 80 plus percent of the time and, and 20 less percent of the time. Um, and that's a healthy relationship. That means the majority of the time things are good, there's gonna be some problems, but majority of the time there's, you know, there's a positive um, experience in the relationship. But if you are dealing with a connection where 80% of the time things are not so good and 20% of the time things are good, but then the majority of the time you're wishing things that were better or you're waiting for things to be better, then there's something more going on that you're needing to take a look at because it is no longer a healthy connection. And that I feel like is kind of what you're struggling with in this connection is obviously there are good parts, right? You wouldn't have the feelings that you have for this person. You wouldn't feel the draw or the pull to them if there weren't good moments or good experiences in the connection. I'm not saying this is all bad um, by any means. That's what, why, what makes it so hard. That's why people stay in connections where they're mistreated for so long is because it's not like they're just being mistreated constantly. You know, there, there are good moments. And those moments provide you with hope and insight into what things could be if this person would be different or if they would change or if they would treat you better. And so you hold on and you keep trying and you keep loving and you keep um, overgiving and you, you break your heart every single time because when it, when it comes down to it, things never seem to change. And I feel like that's the biggest thing that you're dealing with this in, in this connection, especially because I feel that things were vastly different in the beginning of this than they are now. That shift kind of happened and you're holding on to what was in the beginning. Um, but you kind of have to make sure that you are taking a look at what is now happening and what you can do to protect yourself here. Now, I'm not saying protect yourself has to be this place of like completely cutting this person off, distancing them, you know, screw you, I'm done. Maybe you're at the place where that's what you have to do. You know, maybe you do need to create that distance. You do need to walk away. But you know, setting boundaries, being honest about your needs, you know, trying to have a conversation and being open to explaining where you're coming from. Now that you have to understand, you're going to get to a point where that per the other person is either going to respond positively or negatively to that. And you can't control their response. You can say your piece, you can ask for what you need. You can be honest, you can be vulnerable and you can be open, but you can't control how this person responds. How, what you can do though, is you can determine what you do when this person responds the way that they do. And that's the power that you have in your connections. And that's how you find the connections that are, are truly meant for you is you are saying, I know what I bring to the table and I know how I deserve to be valued. And if you are unable or unwilling to do that, then I have got to take this elsewhere. And that's what leads you to your people. All right, Capricorn side of this connection. This Capricorn side of the connection. Ooh. I mean, there's a seven of one. Ah, you keep second guessing yourself. I feel like you're wondering, well, you know, maybe I'm just asking for too much. Maybe, you know, maybe I, um, maybe, maybe setting a boundary is selfish. Maybe asking for my needs to be met is, is, you know, maybe, maybe that isn't what I'm supposed to do. Or like, you know, you deserve to be treated better, but then you maybe start to second guess um, or, or justify their behavior. It's like you, there, and that's what I feel keeps you from this decision is, um, you obviously know this person very well. And I feel like you can see through the, the fear and the self-sabotage and all of that. Like you see who they really are and you love that. You love who they really are. But you know, people will show up, people can only meet you where they've met themselves today, right? Where they're at today. And if this person hasn't fully met themselves, they can't show up as who they really are. And that leaves you with whoever they're capable of being today. So if anything, I want you to take this reading as a confirmation that if you are not in a connection where you are being treated with love and respect and vulnerability or, or where you're not being reciprocated or where you're not being um, treated just well in general, your needs are valid. Your feelings are valid. 
the way that you're experiencing this is valid and anyone who tries to invalidate that experience is benefiting from you not having the boundaries and not standing up from your, for yourself in the first place and that isn't fair to you. So I don't know, someone out there I feel needs to hear that. Let's keep going. All right, this person's energy toward Capricorn. One more, this person's energy toward Capricorn. Here it is, the Hierophant universe with the Queen of Pentacles. I mean, this person needs a little bit of a wake up call. Um, and, and, you know, I think that that's what is so challenging about this is they are totally letting their fear and self-sabotage win here. Um, I feel like, you know that you don't know what you have until it's gone thing? You know, I'm not saying that that's what's happening here or that's what would happen if you walked away. I don't think walking away out of the hopes that someone recognizes what they're losing is ever a good thing to do because that's just, it, it keeps you stuck in that same cycle of wanting someone to change. But, you know, I do think and have experienced in my life both the person being undervalued and the post person doing the undervaluing that we have a tendency to, when we, when we receive something that is so good and so valuable, we have a tendency to forget what value add that thing is to our life. Like it's almost like we become so used to that value that we forget that we once valued it greatly. And that is, I mean, that's a lack of gratitude. That's a lack of, you know, not focusing on the good in your life. And it feels like that's kind of what this person started doing. Maybe they started looking more at the problems or the issues or, again, they started focusing on reasons to push this connection away as opposed to reasons to show up for it, to do the hard stuff, to do the work. Um, and that's not fair to you. You know, you might be like, oh, this person needs a wake-up call. They need to wake up. They need to see how their behavior hurts others. They need to stop self-sabotaging. They need to do all these things. And you are you could be right. You very well might be right. But none of that is guaranteed to happen. And none of that, um, and, and con con investing in a connection out of the hopes that any of that changes is going to leave you feeling the way that you've been feeling for a while now. And I feel like you've been hurting um, for a while in this connection. Person's energy toward Capricorn. are again with the ace of cups which we just saw so there's something else about this message let me clarify this queen of pentacles with the ace of cups clarifying this it's like your openness is triggering for them okay just give me just a second because there's the two of Okay, so that's exactly what it is. Your honesty, your emotional availability and openness and honesty is very triggering for this person because they don't know how to meet you there. And so their best response to that is to do what they can do to regain control of the situation. Because with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, they doubt 
that they can ever have what they want in love, whether or not they're aware of it or not. Now you do too, but in a different way. Since you doubt it, you chase it. Since they doubt it, they run from it. So it's, it's kind of the same, the same underlying fears, the same underlying, you know, struggles with feeling lovable and all of that, which is actually probably why you, you get this person and you, you like know them on such a, a deep level is because I feel like you see a little bit of yourself in them. Someone, you know, and maybe that's why there's this energy of trying to fix them coming here. Um, but I just feel like what you need to know is you can be open and honest and vulnerable all day long. But if someone isn't willing to like hear you or be open to that, because I feel like this person thinks very highly of you. I don't think that they're, I don't think this is a bad person. I don't think they're even trying to hurt you. I think that the majority of their decision is coming from how to protect themselves. And the best way they know how to do that is sabotage the connection. So however that's manifesting in their life, um, that's kind of the reason behind it. This person's energy toward Capricorn. <laughs> See, they don't feel good enough for the connection. Ten of Swords with the Strength in Reverse. They don't feel good enough for it, which we are also kind of just talked about. Um, and so they'd rather just get hurt now. I, you know, I have experienced that in connections in the past where I, I, you know, the reason I like to do these readings and I've explained this before is because I've experienced kind of this energy of chasing and I've experienced the energy of being a runner. Now in hindsight, I understand my role. I didn't at the time, but, um, in a lot of the connections that I was dealing with where that person would actually show up for me and like loved me in the best way that they knew how, I would completely push that away and I would sabotage by, you know, trying to um, just in, in different kind of pretty immature ways. This was back in my earlier 20s. And it was almost like I would rather be the one that was the cause for the hurt instead of fully putting myself out there, being 100% open to the connection and ending up getting hurt because at least it was in my control. And so I feel like that's a little bit of what this person is doing is it's like, I'd rather just break my own heart. I'd rather just sabotage this connection and get hurt than give this person the power to hurt me, um, which is something that they have to work through. Okay, we're gonna hop on over to the extended. You have second option with the 10 of wands in reverse. We're gonna jump into the deeper messages of this connection, looking at the deeper purpose and the best way for you to move forward in order to align further with your higher self. I've been announcing this at the end of my videos, but I am hosting a how to attract the love that you deserve and desire workshop on April 5th at 6 p.m. Um, Central Time. The information for that is in the description box below. It is a live Zoom event, not, a, not on YouTube, and tickets are required. If you cannot make the live event, I will be sending out a recording the next day of the event to every single person that purchases a ticket. The only thing you will miss out on if you purchase um, the ticket to receive the recording instead of attending the live event is I will be doing a Q&A session at the very end. Obviously, if you are not in attendance for the event, you will not be able to ask questions, but you will receive the recording of the Q&A session with the recording of the event anyway. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. That email is and always will be in the description box below. Thank you so much, Capricorn, as always, for your support of my channel. I obviously hope that this reading helped and resonated with you in a way that you were needing today. And as always, Capricorn, I wish you nothing but love and healing on your journey moving forward. All right, bye Capricorn.